Of my strongest belief is at least 95% of people live a mediocre life. It's heartbreaking. They live a version of a life where they're 51% happy and 49% miserable. We are more stressed, we are less healthy, we're under more pressure than we've ever been in our lives. We have so much choice, we have so many things in abundance at our fingertips, but none of it brings true contentment or happiness. Most people my age at 50 have given up the ghost and we're only halfway through our lives, like it's an absolute tragedy. It takes a huge amount of courage. It takes courage and a willingness to be uncomfortable and to be uncomfortable for a lot longer than you want to be and to be uncomfortable at a greater intensity than you want to be. I look back at my life and the roadmap that got me to where it is now and it was painful. I joined the police at 19 years of age, it was my lifelong dream. I joined the dog squad at 22 and I'd hit the pinnacle of my career. I spent the next nine years involved in so much violence and tragedy and seeing the depravity of what human beings are capable of perpetrating against each other and it had a toll. I loved that job, it was the best thing I'd ever done, but ultimately it broke me. I ended up with PTSD, depression. The darkest day I ever had was three days. I lay in bed three nights in a row with a Glock pistol in my hand, drinking heavily every night, battling with the demons every day of just trying to survive. Because I got to a depth of darkness and pain where I had a way out. All I had to do was that. It wasn't going to be a hard thing. But something inside me drove me to not do that. It was some of the most horrific pain, physical pain that I've ever felt. It was just the darkest place I've ever been to, but now I'm just grateful for it. My wake up call was the birth of my first daughter and then subsequently her sister. At that time I was so out of control. I was self-medicating with alcohol. I was using cocaine and ecstasy to self-medicate and try and feel better. My life was really out of control. And when my daughter was born, in 2005, she was handed to me in the delivery room and I held her in my arms and I looked down at her and I burst into tears because I thought, now you've got to get your shit together. There wasn't a flash of lightning. God didn't speak to me from the heavens. I looked down and went, shit, if I don't do something, nothing's going to change. I got married not long after I left the police. And unfortunately, at that time of my life, I shouldn't have been picking pizza toppings, let alone lifelong partners. And we ended up in a really conflicted and difficult marriage. That eventually ended in divorce and as a result, for the last eight years, I've been in a really challenging environment where there's a lot of conflict around time with my daughters. And in the last three years, I haven't had a lot of time with them and it's something that breaks my heart. I've got two choices, let it destroy me and be the victim of it, or keep turning up each day and create something amazing out of it. It's all our own responsibility. You can blame your parents, we can blame society, we can blame the government, you can blame whoever. But the stark reality for every person out there, you will live a shit life when, until you take responsibility. The only way that I learned how to turn it around because I couldn't find a me, was I had to go and try everything. So I've spent 17 years going to every happy clapper, caftan wearing, incense burning course with every alternate medicine healer. I've been a kinesiologist, hypnotherapist, you name it. I've done all the weirdest shit there is. I've worked with psychologists, psychiatrists. I've read so many books on neurochemistry. I've done everything I can do to understand the brain, how it works, our emotion, our physiology, and I've just done the fucking work. Because at the end of the day, there was no other way. And the good part for my clients and the people I work with now, I take that 17 years of stuff that worked and put it together. There's a whole lot that didn't and I've just left it behind. But this has been a full-time pursuit for the last 17 years. Every one of my clients, I say to them, nobody did anything amazing without challenge and obstacle. Nobody in the world's ever achieved anything unbelievable without some real difficulty. Embrace the challenge and embrace the difficulty and realize when you look back, they're gonna be the, the parts of your life that were the most fruitful, where you planted the seeds for who you're gonna be in the future. In my 50s now, I'm fitter, stronger and harder than I've ever been in my life, mentally, emotionally and physically. The number one most important thing in my life is being a loving, connected and powerful leader. And that means being vulnerable. Being loving and vulnerable is the only way to impact and help other people. 
the last to fall. The biggest feedback I get from all of my clients about the core element of what turns them around is my honesty. Because they say to me, they can't hide. I'm no bullshit. I'm not there for you to like me. I'm there to try and help you. And if that means some really tough love that you're not going to enjoy, then I'm prepared to do that. I have the confidence to change other people's lives for one simple factor. I've done it myself, I know how it works. I was a really broken human being before. And I saw the amount of pain that brought to me and I saw how much challenge and how much difficulty it was. And I saw the commitment it took to come out. So if somebody comes to me and asks for my help, they'll get it. But they're not going to get it in the flavour they particularly want it. Everyone can turn their life around. I don't care who you are. Most people just don't have the courage or the willingness to even try. I want to stop as many people as I can getting to the bottom of that dark pit and whatever their Glock at the head moment is, I want to help them not get there.